Hi. In this lesson, I want us to look at the work done by this guy. This is a Victorian geologist called Henry Cadell. And as well as looking pretty smart, I must admit, in his tweeds, Cadell managed to sort of reveal how mountains were made. This is work he did back in the 1880s, following um, mapping the rocks of the Northwest Highlands of Scotland. What he tried to do was to model the effects on the rocks that he'd seen in the ancient rocks of the Scottish mountains, to try and reveal how those mountains had formed. So decades before Wagner started to um, suggest the idea that the continents had moved round, Cadell realised that the rocks he was seeing uh, in the mountains had been compressed in some way. Now he had no idea of the geological forces that had actually created that compression, but he was convinced that uh, this compression had occurred. So much so he built uh, the model you can see here, uh, created a whole series of layers of different materials and started experimenting with their compression. His work revealed the truth in the geology. Let me show you uh, a modern equivalent or a modern example of Cadell's work. This is a modern recreation of Cadell's experiment. So there's a layer of, of sand and, and plaster, and clay, stacked up, ready to be compressed. If we then start to compress that, the equivalent of plate movement, we can see how these horizontal layers react to that stress. You can see they start to bend, and eventually the compression becomes so great that it'll start to break, so we see folding, and as you can see now, a whole series of, of faults. If we compress it a little bit more, we actually see how, what type of faults are being produced here. You can see the hanging wall is moving up. The foot wall, relatively, is moving down. We also see that the angle of dip of this fault, of where it's moving, is very gentle. That low angle of dip of the fault plane, we see it uh, on the left-hand side here, and the fact that these faults are reverse faults because the hanging wall is, uh, is being upthrown makes them thrust faults. The effect of this is to thicken the crust. The example here shows maybe an equivalent of 10 to 12 kilometers. In reality, that's not how thick or how high the mountains would get because this would also be sagging down into the mantle. What we actually see then for mountains is as they get pushed up, they, they get eroded. The higher ground, the rocks in the higher ground get washed down into the basins, into the, the lower ground here. So the eroded land surface the mountains that we'll see are the eroded stumps of these uh, folds and thrust faults. But those mountains are there because the crust has been thickened up. If we look at uh, an example of this, this is uh, the Appalachian Mountains in the east of America. And we see exactly these same structures uh, in the geology uh, beneath these mountains. Okay, then. So to summarise that, if you look on page 14 of your theme 13 booklet, we've got the various stages here of the formation of a thrust. We start out with our horizontal uh, sedimentary rocks, laid down uh, in sequence. With some compression then, these rocks start to fold. So we get a series of antiforms and sinforms forming as the crust starts to shorten. If that compression continues, 
we'll start to see the formation of overfolds as again the crust continues to shorten. The stress then can continue to such an extent that the rocks reach their, um, their, fr their fracture point and they, they break. And we end up then with a reverse fault forming. This reverse fault at a, a low angle, at a gentle angle, forms a thrust and can continue so we end up with the crust thickening up, starting to form mountains. So if we look at a thrust fault, we can see here that the hanging wall is upthrown, just like in a reverse fault. The foot wall is downthrown. The key difference, though, that means this isn't a, re a reverse fault, is that gentle angle of dip. The fault plane here isn't at a steep angle. Now, you might remember this particular structure. This is how we started uh, theme 13, looking at this uh, exposure of rock at Broadhaven in Pembrokeshire. What I'd like you to do is have a go at question 9. Question 9 is looking at this particular outcrop. You have a photo of it on page 14. Have a go at those questions now. Remember, if we follow the, the same bed all the way through, this is the structure that we get. You may also want to have a go at the digging deeper activity, where we look at uh, the formation of mountains, such as uh, this one. This is perhaps the most spectacular uh, example, uh, the Matterhorn, um, formed by uh, a thrust fault, where the uh, rock, uh, the hanging wall here, which forms the top of the mountain, has been pushed up uh, on top of the, the foot wall there to create this uh, spectacular uh, peak. So, Press pause now, have a go at question nine, see what you come up with. Okay then, let's have a look at some answers. So this is a photograph of the, um, of the outcrop at uh, Broadhaven. If we look, we have the thrust plane running through here. It's where the beds get displaced. That's where the fault is. So the main compressive force has got to come from left and right. That's where we get the uh, compression creating this fault. And the movement of this at the scale given here is about one and a half meters. Those of you that had to go at digging deeper, looking at um, the role of this in making mountains, really I think comes down to one key factor. Because thrust faults, by piling crust up on top of itself, thickens the crust. Mountains aren't just where rocks get pushed up. Rocks uh, in the crust get thickened. Some of that then will be pushed up. Even more of it though is actually pushed down, uh, so forcing the mantle down. So we find where we have the highest mountains, it's where we get the thickest crust because of this compression creating thrust fault after thrust fault after thrust fault, as well as folded rocks. To be honest, the name Fold Mountains is a bit of a misnomer. More, far more accurately, we'd call them Thrust Fault Mountains, just as Henry Cadell showed us 135 years ago.
So, as we watch the sunset over the Matterhorn, we can see that compression will not only fold rocks, but will also cause faulting. And in particular, this kind of faulting we call thrust faulting is key to understanding the formation of mountains. Now, next time we need to think about um, how we recognize perhaps different uh, types of folds and faults together, but that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.